Hello folks, welcome to this episode of Rich Insights. I'm Don Rich, Head of Investments for Esoterica Capital. Today's topic is on leading economic indicators, right? These LEIs. They are supposed to be leading, right? So they give us some idea um, as to where the economy is going, all right? At least they're supposed to. Now, the way this works is that each country has a set of indicators, leading indicators um, for themselves, right? So each country has some unique indicators. And then we have some that are uh, some other measures that are uh, supposed to be leading indicators across all countries, right? So we can compare things on an apple to apples uh, basis. So we're going to take a look at some of uh, both, uh, both sets of those today. Now, these leading indicators tend to be made up of around 10 factors, right? 10 components. And, uh, you know, they, got, they have a basic recipe that everybody follows. Generally, stock market performance is in there and it tends to be the most important one, right? The stock market is supposed to be um, a leading indicator uh, by itself, right? The, the stock market is supposed to discount all the, the uh, future related information. So we have the stock market, then the bond market tends to be the second most Im important ones. Uh, that's the level of interest rates, the, the uh, slope of the yield curve, and things of that nature. Then on top of that, it, it varies a little bit uh, from indicator to indicator, but tend to be some measure of slack in the labor force, right? Just, just the robustness of the labor force. Slack in manufacturing, um, and then slack in, in, in the overall economy, right? Uh, like a GDP measure. Okay. So how you put those together in the formula, you know, differs, but, uh, you know, that's the same, they're, they're the same basic components uh, for everyone. So let's start off here. Let's go to the charts and take a look at what we're seeing for the U.S. This is the conference board, right? Notice here the conference board uh, leading economic indicator. And this is for uh, May. All right, so as we look across here, we can see the March reading, right? And then April, and and then uh, we have May, All right? May is essentially zero, or, or I'm sorry, it's essentially 100. Here you can see 99.8. That's why it's hard to see on this chart. Okay, so the way these things work is, is above 100, Above 100, so some are 0 to 100, other, others are centered around 0, but whether it's above 0 or in this case above 100, it means in the, six, in the next 6 to 9 months, the indicator suggests economic expansion. Right? Below 100, you're, you're looking at some deceleration, possibly even some contraction. Okay, So that's how we should interpret this. So again, we had, have fallen below 100, on the April reading, and we stayed there in March. But I, I'm sorry, we stayed there in May. But May did uh, uh, bounce, right? May was higher than April. All right, so that would seem to be encouraging, right? It, at least, at the very least, we know that's due in part uh, due to the rebound in equity prices. It's given a, given a bit of a boost there. Okay, now the, the problem with these uh, leading indicators is that if we just look at them month to month or, you know, above 100, below 100, they, they really don't tell us the full story, right? We have to dig a little bit deeper. And the best way i found to dig deeper is to look at these indicators on a year-over-year -year basis, okay? Year-over-year -year changes. So it's the exact same information. These are just monthly bar charts here on the uh, first chart. Now I'm just going to take those and look at them on a year-over-year -year basis, all right, now why do I do it that way? Why do I like uh, that? Well, we can see this indicator has a very good track record. When these year-over-year -year changes fall below zero, very good track record at predicting recessions. Okay? And, you know, the, the data series here is go, goes back 30 years, January 90. And you can see during the recessions, you know, obviously um, it was below zero. And it tended to be below zero uh, long before the, the, the recessions. In other words, it did serve as a leading indicator. Right? It was, was, was indicating the slowdown before the slowdown actually materialized. Okay, so where are we at today? We saw in the previous chart that bounce, right? From May to April, we saw that bounce. But 
when we look at a year over year basis, it's far less impressive, right? We are still down here uh, in, in danger territory. We're in the danger zone. Compared to previous times in history, this is, you know, a pretty dire uh, outlook. Now, it's not as dire as it was during the 2008, right? Based on this measure, it's not as bad as in 2008. So we've got a whole lot of measures that say we've already surpassed 2008. But the leading indicator is not one of them. It does signify, uh, 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 it does illustrate a, a, a significant draw, uh, drawdown, slowdown, right? But not to the extent we saw in, in 2008. Uh, to put it in perspective, well, let's go back here. We'll see, you know, where the the point we're at now. I'm sorry. Here we go. The point we're at now is uh, below the 2001 recession and the uh, 91 recession as well. All right. So obviously a severe slowdown, right? No doubt about it. But but not quite as bad as 2008. But the important thing is is again we're getting excited. We're getting excited about a lot of this macro data that came has come along, right? And, and May tends to be a little bit better than April. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think, I think now we're getting overwhelming evidence that suggests the depths of the recession probably happened in April. But that doesn't mean we're out of the woods, right? Again, if you look at that chart, we are a long, long way from being out of the woods here. We could be in this recession still for a prolonged period of time. And the other thing, of course, is the seasonal effects. We're getting awful excited about a, a lot of information now that's starting to tick up. But you know what, boys and girls? It ticks up every year at this time. All right? We forget about that because we're, we're so virus-focused right now. Everything's corona, corona, corona. And, and any piece of information that's better than April looks to be good news. But when we stand back and look at it, that's just a general trend that we detect nearly every year, right? So that's another advantage of looking at things on a year-over-year -year basis. So, you know, we looked at the conference board one for the U.S. and, and you know, the U.S. is is far from out of danger, <clears throat> far from being out of danger. Now, let's uh, broaden our scope here. This one is from the uh, OECD here, another leading indicator. And again, the advantage of this one it's not specific to the U.S. The advantage of this one is we're supposed to be able to look across countries, right? Give us an apples to apples comparison across country. So we start off with indicators within a particular country, and then we start going across the various countries. All right. Now, you can see we are missing a, a couple pieces of information here. You can see Australia hasn't had one, hasn't had a uh, leading indicator uh, print for a while. Uh, another one down here in Norway. And... Part of that is just the current environment, right? Is 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 we from from a data perspective, uh, we're really seeing things that we haven't seen before, in, in terms of being able to collect the data, whether uh, government or or uh, corporate entities are open and able to report the data. Somebody has to digest it. Yada yada yada. Uh, so that that's why we're seeing uh, some of these areas are not reporting the data on a uh, on the same frequency that they normally do. But nevertheless, we still have enough information here. Let's take a look. Now, as we can see here, as we look down the columns here, just compare May to April, right? And the first thing you notice from the, the coloring is, you know, obviously March, April, and May are, are much uh, redder or, or more orange in color than previous, right? So this, this chart only uh, handles the last 12 months, but, you know, obviously the slowdown is evident uh, and it's not just the U.S., right? It's evident everywhere. But we also see a slight bump here. Whether we look at the global metric here, it tends to be better. The U.S. metric, as we said, tends to be better. Euro ticked up a little bit. But notice another common feature here. If they're above 100, that's good news, right? Economic expansion is expected. You see many numbers above 100? Uh, we actually have that down here in the bottom row here, the percent uh, above 100 for the month, zero, right? And again, even going into the slowdown, before coronavirus hit, there were very few that were actually above 100. Look at the January and February figures here, all right? Now, 
It is true. It is true. Again, this very last line, the percent improving on the month. 92% of them have improved on the month. That is true, right? And that's something we should get excited about. But we want to keep this in perspective. These numbers are still bad. We are still below 100. And in fact, uh, uh, there's one case, I believe it's in, uh, is it Japan? Yeah. There's one or two cases where May actually was worse than April. All right, so the depths of the slowdown, the depth of the economic damage from the virus are a little bit different from country to country. But in general, the story is consistent. Things have gotten a little better in May, but it's far from uh, the all clear signal. Now, we can really drive that point home here with the next. Again, we're going to look at these uh, uh, metrics uh, on a longer time series. So on this chart, I just have the U.S. and the global uh, in, uh, indicators. And again, you can see this just tremendous drop off uh, due to the virus and the slight bounce we've had. Now, based on this one, based on this index, notice that we're actually worse off today than we were during the 2008-2009 uh, slowdown, right? Based on this metric, we're actually worse off. That's what I was mentioning before. Uh, on a number, based on a number of indicators, 1929 is the only comparable that we, we have uh, to the, the uh, virus, right? We, we tend to have surpassed 2008 levels on, on many, many metrics. The one we looked at before, that wasn't true, but, but again, it was still signaling, uh, you know, a rather dire outlook. And, and this one's the same, all right? This one is the same. So you can see the U.S. and global, right? They tend to track each other pretty well. And they're obviously tracking each other now. And things have bounced. They have bounced a little bit. But we are still, still not out of the woods, right? Not out of the woods by any measure. So what do we do with all this information? Obviously, we've had this, this, this crazy, crazy equity market rally up. You know, at times we were up 40% off the lows in March, right? This is a buy everything. Fundamentals don't matter. Just get on your horse. Some people call it a bull market. I call it bull crap, right? We have become so disconnected uh, with the fundamentals. And, and you know, I, I, I was fully expecting this relief rally. We have just gone so far, though, and so fast that, that uh, reality has, has long since fallen by the wayside here. And, and again, we see that in the economic uh, numbers, the leading indicators. We are not out of the woods. We're not even close to being out of the woods, right? Just go outside your, your everyday life, right? In, in the state of Michigan where I live, you know, things have started to open up. But we are so far away from normal. We got lines, uh, you know, at the fast food restaurants. They, they seem to take forever. We got people sitting in the parking lots waiting to go in stores. This isn't normal. Right? We are so far from uh, uh, getting back to normal. We're so far from uh, uh, earnings returning to uh, their, their 2019 levels. Right? Believe it or not, right now, forward earnings are pricing that a year from now, we'll get back to 2019 levels. Wow. Wow. We are so far away from it. That seems to be terribly optimistic. But... There is this, the, the disconnect right now between the fundamental information that I just showed you, right, and, and the equity rally. You want to adjust your risk profile according to this disconnect. It doesn't mean the disconnect's going to end tomorrow. We don't know how long. Uh, when we get in these crazy markets, they can last for a while, but they never, never end um, happily, right? This, at, at some point, we're going to have to pay the piper and recognize that, that Earnings are much lower than they were before. Economic growth is going to be much slower. We are talking one to two years, in, in my estimation, by the time we get back to normal. So you want to adjust your risk profile to reflect that environment. All right, so uh, that's our message for today. I'm Don Rich, and you've just experienced a rich insight. I hope you've enjoyed it. May your bear be colder than the company you keep. We'll talk again soon. Thank you.